What's going on guys? It is Murdering here back with another Raid Shadow Legends video. Today we're going to be talking about the team that I made. Had a ton of fun on stream last night. We called this video Bear Force 1 based on my Twitch chat. And what I want to do before I start the video is leave a comment below on the best alternative title to this video that you could come up with. We had a lot of clever people in Twitch chat yesterday giving me their ideas for showcasing this really fun duo of the two battle pass bears that honestly i did overlook until now and i had a ton of fun building them using them in the arena there's a lot to go over here but do me a favor leave a comment below give me your best bear pun title that you can think of i'm sure youtube can do just as well as twitch chat with these suggestions so let's get right into the video as mentioned before from the first battle pass we got we have ursine ironhide as well as Ursine Ice Crusher. This two bear duo, I really wanted to see what we could do. I went over their skills, we were talking about a few things, and so let's just go over the skills really quick. Attacks one enemy, has a chance of increasing the cooldown of one of the target's skills by one turn at random. So this is pretty decent, granted you get enough turns, he is a defense-based champion. And we have this A2 called Beatback. Attacks one enemy two times. Has a chance of decreasing the turn meter by 5%. 10% if there is an attack down on the boss. Now we have Rampaging Swipe. And you'll see when we get later into the video why I'm kind of grinning when I say this. This is an ability that has a swinging log. Just come down and destroy the champions. So what happened is every time I was fighting an arena and I used this ability, I would just yell get logged and that became a thing in chat it was a ton of fun anyways we have this as a 75 percent chance of placing a decrease attack buff so we can see the synergy already between that a3 and a2 moving on to his passive has a chance of decreasing the turn meter by 7.5 percent each hit also has a 50 percent chance of putting one of the target skills on cooldown if the target is under decreased crit rate as you could probably assume decreased crit rate is from the other bear in this duo and this goes all the way up to a 100% chance which is really cool and I did see this I have heard a lot of things about how underwhelming these champions are there's a ton of block cooldown reduced cooldown kind of like warlord and a lot of synergy with reducing that turn meter so I said let's give it a shot I've never personally tested it so I cannot relay any information on it so before we get into testing, let's go over the second bear here. We have an A1 that places a block cooldown debuff for one turn on the target, also a defense-based champion. We have an A2 attacks all enemies, applies a decreased crit rate that we just talked about that has synergy with the passive of the other bear. Now we have this passive here, decreases the damage all allies receive from critical hits by 15%, fills this champion's turn meter by 5% whenever an enemy lands any type of non-critical hit, so normal strong or a weak hit. This champion does have an aura and increases ally HP in all battles by 25%. So this was really cool. I'll show you the gear and the masteries after we get into this because I'm really excited to give this a shot here. So I did drop down to gold because realistically, platinum teams are very hard to test champions out. We're going to go and head straight into gold and see what we can do and also take a look at what the new gold 4 actually does look like. Okay, so really quickly going through the list, we have single arbiter, single arbiter. We have this meme team here. Duchess arbiter. Okay, nothing too crazy. A lot of Tormund's coming back after that change that they made, which is really cool. Alright, so let's give this Arbiter Duchess team a go and see how we can fare. We're going to start off, obviously, with our attack up. Now let's get some turn meter decrease on them to make sure we don't get cut off. We'll use this decrease crit rate, see if we get anything to land. We did land on the Arbiter and the Ray. Oh, as well as Zargala, so that's good. Now, let's... <laughs> Let's use Rampaging Swing. Let's log my friends here. Okay, we didn't kill anybody. There is that Duchess passive. It's going to prove to be, I don't know, kind of a nuisance. We also don't have defense down, so that's definitely going to contribute as well. Weak hit, perfect. Um, we don't really need to heal anybody, so let's just get some damage onto Duchess there. Turn meter decrease. And let's use this A1. We're not going to be able to block any cooldowns here, unfortunately, but... Okay, weak hit anyways. Don't need to turn meter boost just yet. And now we can use this. So we only have a weak hit target, so probably not use that A1. This A1 can actually do pretty well since block debuff has no effect. 
on abilities like this, it has a chance of increasing the cooldown of a skill, so this is pretty strong. We did get a weak hit, so it doesn't matter, but something to still consider regardless. That's kind of why I like the Black Bear over the Polar Bear, because he does have that option, even if there is a block debuff on the champion, to really prove to be, I don't know, I guess like a nuisance. Okay, let's try to apply this block cooldown on Arbiter here. Okay, that didn't land. So we have the revive there. I'm not really worried about Arbiter just yet. Just to be safe with this, let's cleanse this Arbiter from that defense down. In case for some reason that's an issue. So we still have the same situation with Duchess here. Let's go for that A1. We did increase the cooldown, so that's awesome. So this was one of the main things I wanted to talk about with this champion. Why I thought it was so cool. So we have the retaliation there. Now we have defense on everyone. Let's go for that AoE again. Since only one of the champions has that block let's strip these buffs here that seems like the smart thing to do don't need to boost the turn meter just yet let's try to get some more damage so we do have a weaken which is good increases the damage there okay so we lost the first bear let's take a look at this a2 ability see what we can do against arbiter here decrease turn meter this is one of the things that i did mention before that i liked a lot about this champion solid heal from everyone turn meter boost so now we get a double boost here with arbiter this is proving to be kind of a long match, I must admit. Okay, time to log and see. Unfortunately, Duchess is going to be a problem here. She is strong affinity to these champions. We did increase some cooldowns, which is really good. It's going to sustain this fight and give us a better shot at winning overall. Let's try to strip any of these buffs, do some AoE damage to everybody. And we'll go for the kill. Okay, we did get the kill. Awesome. So he does hit pretty hard. He has decent gear. Nothing too crazy as far as damage goes. But I guess everything helps. And now let's slowly start trying to get rid of this Duchess. Who's definitely going to be a problem. We don't want defense down on our damage dealing bear here. Maybe we can... Okay, we didn't increase the cooldowns. We didn't ap apply block cooldown there. Let's boost the turn meter again. Keep our champions cycling properly. Let's go for a pushback effect and see what we can do. Okay, so she's still using her A1. I didn't watch close enough to see if I've actually been using this to my advantage as far as okay, weaken is good. Reducing the cooldowns these champions are taking. Obviously, this team probably doesn't have a ton of damage on the Zargala or the Ray. Strong factor here is I have two red champions. Okay, so a fair amount of damage there. You know what, let's go for a HP burn. We did get it, so extra damage. There's the revive. Let's try to strip anything if we possibly can. So Ray barely lived there. No pun intended. Let's go back. Okay, increase the cooldown on Arbiter. Perfect. Let's go for that block cooldown. Oh, we looks like we removed the buffs from hitting her too hard. Which is fine. We can handle it. That's for sure. Let's boost this turn meter again. This is becoming a really long battle here. Still can't kill the bear though. We are going to get a double turn meter boost if this bear dies, which is the good news. Let's try to get a kill on two of these champions. Okay, we got it. Awesome. Now pretty much the name of the game, can we kill the Duchess fast enough? It looks like we are getting pretty lucky. And we're going to get a double turn meter boost. Perfect. This should soar things right away. She is healing though, which is going to be an issue. Let's strip those buffs. Let's go for this. Okay, we did decrease the turn meter once again there. Let's go for the A1 now. Weaken applied, perfect. And why not just try to kill another champion to make things run more smooth. And I'm going to gamble here and bank on the damage from our black slash brown bear so we did get the revive there let's try to get this kill okay we increased the cooldown which is definitely good now let's turn meter boost okay so she's dead hopefully arbiter doesn't revive yet i know we have been consistently increasing her cooldowns which is definitely good decrease that turn meter once again let's hit him with the a1 what can we do just a counter attack as we can see, turn meter is getting boosted from that passive we have here. Let's reboost this turn meter. Another weak hit, awesome. 
and we land the block cooldowns we did perfect so no threat of a revive there this is what i was saying with this synergy here and why i think it's so good personally all we have to do is kill this arbiter and we are home free let's see if we can log our opponent here get absolutely wrecked by bear force one throw it on auto gg this is what i'm talking about Arbiter, Duchess, Ray, Zargala is no match for Bear Force 1 with the support of Arbiter and Cethalia. Now let's find another battle that we can do. After refreshing, because we really don't want to fight any Tormund teams unless I'm using a Duchess. So we have four Skull Crushers, nice flex Chaos Beast. So people, I don't know, people did say Gold 4 got harder. I personally don't see it. Okay, let's try to face this team here. This looks like a really fun team to go against. So what we're going to do to try something a little bit different is we're going to throw in Seeker here, try to give our team a defense up, and see how much our damage increases. What's going to be really important is making sure that Seeker actually gets a chance to go, and try to apply that Decrease Crit Rate, because Decrease Crit Rate is actually a really slept on ability. I know not a lot of champions have it, but still. Okay, so Seeker did get to go. We have a double turn meter boost here. Let's go ahead and do some damage to Arbiter. Why not go for the Provoke? We did get the Provoke. Awesome. And we have decreased crit rate coming out. That applies the defense up. And let's see what our damage dealing bear can do. Get absolutely logged, my friend. That's what I like to see. Awesome damage. Throw this on auto. Easy win. Another battle in the books using three epics to so their three epics so shout out to this team kisail awesome team but as we can see from the damage difference just with that defense up especially when fighting a team like skull crown who you know is going to counter attack when you use that first aoe we have seeker applying that defense up buff as soon as seeker is hit with that crit giving our two bears that much more damage now let's keep playing around having some more fun let's see if we can pull this off this is going to be a slightly more difficult team because as people know, Golden Reaper has very high base speed. My Seeker is currently tuned for the Clan Ball, so let's see if we have a shot in this battle. The one thing we do have going for us is, once again, our two bears are Force and Red Affinity, which is the opposite of Trunda. So let's see if we can, in fact, pull this off. We have that decreased crit rate. Not a chance. We don't have the counterattack, which is the benefit of Seeker. And now let's see what our bear can do here get logged so this is a really fun team no matter how i look at it i think these bears are awesome obviously you do have to pick your opponents kind of carefully as mentioned before if you're not going to use a duchess or someone like a seafie torment is going to be a problem or you can use someone else with the block debuff facing another duchess as well can be a problem although teams like this are very risky to run especially without a speed leader so I probably don't want to fight this first team since I'm a weak affinity to all three of them and it would just be a match that went on forever. However, this second team here is kind of interesting and I really don't recommend ever using a defense lead. It's actually surprising to see in gold four arena. Usually a team like this should not make it as far as we're seeing. So let's go right ahead and use our Madam Ceres here to put that defense down and let's hope that we have enough speed to go before this Valkyrie goes. We don't have to worry about that shield buff being too annoying here. Another thing to keep in mind is we also don't want Bad L cleansing the defense down and weaken before our two bears have a chance to go. So the first bear gets to go, that's the good news. And the second bear that's to go, let's see how much damage we can actually do here. Okay, so we didn't do a ton of damage. We weren't able to kill anybody. Our best bet is killing Bad L with the Arbiter. And it looks like we didn't lock any cooldowns. Let's go for this strip here and see if we can reduce that shield. As we can see, awesome turn meter boosting from that passive with this bear. Let's go for the kill. Easy kill there. Throw this on auto. This is why I don't recommend not using a speed lead. And as mentioned, why I'm very surprised. I know people have said gold 4 has gotten a lot harder. However, teams like this, in my opinion, don't be scared when you see a Valkyrie or a Bad L. It's really suboptimal to run a non-speed leader unless you have some type of torment to keep your team 
safe while the other team is turn meter boosting because it's very unlikely you'll ever go first in a situation like this and this team really isn't built for going second because it doesn't offer anything to your team so it does look like from these first few battles maybe it's because there's an arena event going on people are using these kind of defenses but let's go for this team they do have a seeker so let's go arbiter seeker versus arbiter seeker let's hope for that counter attack from skull crusher but what i was going to say before is it does look like that the arena has gotten a little bit easier i cannot speak for the lower ranks i'm not sure what the lower ranks look like just yet let's see if we can get a counter attack here we did perfect so we don't have defense on weekend they do have defense up so i guess the defense up kind of balances out either way we did get to kill the arbiter so that's the good news let's go for this strip here turn meter increase okay, so only two champions died we still have our damage dealing bear now let's revive our team up you know what let's just throw this on auto and watch the bears do the lord's work awesome i really do love these champions i think there's really cool synergy now what i'm going to do is i'm going to show you you know what just out of curiosity let's refresh one more time just to see okay so here are some better teams we do have a lot of tormens double turn meter booster with the cfi here we have three champions this champion seems decently well built you know what let i want to fight this team we have one turn meter booster and a fast cc here so these teams do look like they're getting better shout out to our clan mate krugan here however still this is not as hard as I would imagine gold 4 should be since the majority of the endgame players will be in gold 4 since platinum is limited. So let's fight this tank team as our final team this evening. And with that defense down. And let's see if we can pull off this win. There should be a shield set. So there's actually not a shield set. This is what I'm saying why it's kind of surprising seeing teams like this in the arena. Okay, Trunda did go, as mentioned before. We do have the strong affinity, so we're not that worried about it. Although Mountain King could definitely be a problem here. Okay, we got resisted on one, which is good. Let's try to do some damage to this Arbiter here through that True Fear. We don't want to use any cooldowns. Should we risk it? Let's risk it, team. Okay, they got absolutely logged there. Thankfully, we risked that. And now we just have to make sure our Mountain King does not the entire team here and we should be fine you know let's just throw it on auto i have faith in the bears as we can see doing awesome damage and after this we're going to get into the gear and what i use to make this team possible one thing i do want to say is on stream i did test out the platinum deflection gear for the first time ever and it was kind of cool the chance for it to proc is rather low so while it was good using the deflection gear it did deflect a lot of trunda stuns which was cool to see it did reflect a lot of hegemon lock cooldowns which is also kind of cool although there's not a lot of benefit in deflection against the hegemon since he's using his only cooldown and even if you do reflect that black cooldown all he has is this a1 anyway so that's not a big deal but the bears actually were deflecting defense down which was really strong however once again it's just a 25 percent chance to happen so rng definitely isn't in your favor if you're relying on these champions the first champion who was kind of like the damage dealer we have ursine ironhide these are the stats he has not a ton of accuracy 250 crit damage 100 crit rate 206 speed 3800 defense and just under 40,000 health as far as masteries i gave him flawless execution because i didn't want to rely on helm smasher grit to proc i kind of wanted to see consistent damage across the board which brings us to our next champion ursine ice crusher i also use flawless execution and this champion doesn't do a lot of damage so i probably shouldn't have given him so as much damage as i did i could have made him tankier maybe even given him some type of cc set which definitely would have been really cool he does have more accuracy because he has that decreased crit rate as mentioned i think that's pretty strong especially when you're fighting against a team who i mean no one's really stacking 125 percent crit rate so you have 100 crit rate 243 crit damage 4100 defense so a little bit more significantly less health and so these are the builds that i gave these champions 
These two bears were a ton of fun. And as far as dungeon use, I don't really have these guys built for dungeons. However, as you can imagine, anywhere where Red Affinity is strong, these guys are going to do well. They're constantly boosting their turn meters. They have a ton of CC with their base kit, where they're increasing the cooldowns of enemy skills, where they're placing block cooldown on the A1. Also, a great synergy with something like a counterattack for progression. So you definitely have options here. Although this isn't really a champion spotlight, I am going over the champions because I have them in front of me. This is more like a four fun thing. I really wanted to see what they could do in arena. And I also wanted to check out what gold four was actually like after this fix here. And I know once again, it is kind of hard to tell since we do have this arena event and some people do throw on easy defense teams just to help out other players. And I think that's really cool. Really quickly showing who I'm actually using in my defense. I do have Arbiter, the two bears and Tormund and it doesn't win that often as we can see here some very good teams have showed up this guy actually used a defense lead which was really smart to prevent the damage from happening to them however we did catch this team arbiter bali hegemon and tormund we beat them with our bear force one defense so a lot of people say legendaries give you that edge in this game gear actually gives you the edge in this game there are tons of teams that have full legendaries in it in the lower arena brackets don't be too scared until you actually see the team if you're willing to use that token to test it out team power also doesn't matter it just means they probably have resistance gear a lot of people kind of miss the point in arena and don't build their champions correctly which is why a team like this with all very very strong legendaries lost to a well-built defense using two battle pass epics that i've labeled as bear force one here along with arbiter and Tormund, and we were able to pull off the win out of curiosity did we win again here so we also be a arbiter dragomorph silar and nithwi interesting as well as arbiter maneater razen and madam saris we did lose the rest so there is that however my point still stands where gear makes the difference. All right, guys, thanks a ton for watching this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. I enjoyed showcasing these bears, seeing what they could do. They're definitely pretty cool. I didn't look at them early on, and I would say they're not bad champions. If anyone said they are terrible champions, you can definitely just show them this video and say, if you have the gear, if you want to gear them properly, Obviously, if you want to use them in silver or bronze, you can just shift down the gear quality that I'm using, and it's going to be more than enough. Do some pretty good damage in those lower tier arenas. As always, if you like this content, don't forget to subscribe, turn on the notification bell, like this video, and I will see you all in the next upload.